Hello, I'm Dr. Washington's assistant, Mr. Smith. I'm just a normal guy. I'm totally not a superhero as disguised. The next period we're going to talk about is known as the Age of Exploration. It could be considered part of the Renaissance just like the Reformation and Scientific Revolution. Today when we talk of exploring we are usually talking about space. Back then it was about exploring planet Earth. Before this period Europeans had no idea that there were other continents on the planet. There were many reasons to go exploring. For the governments of Europe the main motivation was finding new resources. As the Renaissance went on and more and more products were being made materials became very expensive. They hoped that by finding new lands they would also find stuff like wood and iron. Other materials of value could also be found like gold and spices. Finding new sources of these items could mean great returns for any European kingdom. Aside from finding riches there were other reasons such as spreading your religion. As a result of the Reformation there was great competition among Catholics and Protestants to find new converts. There was also the idea of personal glory, you know, becoming famous. What better way to do that than have new lands named after you? Finally, it was just plain fun, or at least, it sounded fun. It gave people a sense of adventure. Even with all these great promises there were reasons that many people dared not explore. The main problem was the fear that comes from a lack of knowledge. For example, textbooks at the time taught that if you sailed across the equator you would burn up. Just like poof, you run fire. Not cool. Also, many books said that the earth was flat and had an edge. If you sailed too far you'd just fall right off the earth entirely. While many educated people at the time knew these claims to be ridiculous it was still common enough knowledge to stop many people from wanting to explore. One final reason, that really was an issue, was cost. It is very expensive to get a ship, hire a crew and buy supplies. Few people could afford it. There really was one problem all the explorers hoped to solve. How can I get to Asia quickly and with lots of stuff to trade? There were great riches in Asia and if you could get there faster than others you could earn more riches. Here's the options on a map as the Europeans saw it at the time. Notice that they had no idea that America even existed. Here's the overland route. This is basically the Silk Road. Simple, but slow. The second route is the Red Line. We can look at the map now and see that this obviously works too but back then they weren't sure. Some people even said there were sea monsters down there. The last route was the most untested. A few explorers believed you could reach the east by sailing west. The first option might better be called Marco Polo's route. He, as you know, traveled with this father to China at age 14. Well, at least that is what he claimed. Whatever the case he was gone for a very long time and it took him three years to reach his destination. The route was very long and dangerous. There were deserts with bandits to cross, rough mountains and lots of unknown terrain. While a trader could still make a lot of money from a successful trip on this route the time commitment was just plain horrendous. If instead they could travel by ship it would be much faster. The Portuguese rulers believed this could be done by sailing south around Africa. The idea was that once you made it around you'd have open sea clear to India. Some argued, however, that Africa never ended and therefore this would be impossible. Plus, as I mentioned, others said that the waters around southern Africa were filled with incredibly dangerous sea monsters. Yikes. The Portuguese tried and tried and ultimately made it around the tip of Africa in 1498 in a voyage led by Vasco de Gama. Notice that this late date is actually after Christopher Columbus whom we'll talk about later. The third option was considered quite radical. In this option you'd go east by sailing west. The main proponent of this idea was Christopher Columbus. He believed he could reach China by sailing west from Europe. He believed that the huge ocean west of Europe was connected to the huge ocean east of China that Marco Polo had written about. In fact, he felt they were the same ocean. It may help to think of it like the old game Pac-Man. In that game if you go off one side of the map you could back out on the other side. 
That was Columbus's idea for reaching the East.